I have two of these pieces of wood and it has been a while since we have painted on these things. So let's jump into this and see what we can make. Let's just get everything ready. Do you ever just look at a color and get excited? Like, what a lovely shade of purple. I can't believe something so beautiful exists. What would you paint if you were painting on wood? I think I want to paint a Luna Moth, but how do I want to go about this? Ooh, good question. Here's my slightly crusty palette. I soaked this thing and these two chunks would not come off, so here we are. I'm not gonna fill this whole palette this time. This stuff dries so fast. This tube is almost out of paint. Can we get anything out? Oh, look at that. But wait, there's more. I have another tube. <laughs> okay, let's start with this orange. I feel like I need to make a sticker called the Krusty Paintbrush Club. Do you think I should do it? Would you join it if I made a sticker? Let me know. We're gonna paint this. Okay, I'm covering it with orange first. Maybe I should have gessoed this. I usually do, but you know what? Not today, not today. Sometimes I actually like the texture of the wood to come through a little more. So I think it'll be cool. Blot this dry. Ooh, I should rinse it again. All right, this needs to dry. It kind of reminds me of Kraft mac and cheese. A Luna moth, let's paint a Luna moth. We should do our little palette here. I would like to do burnt umber. Always a good choice. Pale mint, essential. Ooh, horizon blue. This looks like a good one. Yes, please. All right, ice green. Yes, please. Oh, look at these colors. What a spread. We're just gonna freehand this, which makes me a little nervous, but whatever. It's a little tacky, but so are my jokes. So let's just paint. Now, it's funny that I'm doing a Luna Moth because I have had so many DMs and requests for me to paint one of these. And it's been on my radar for a long time, but you know, you gotta kind of be in the mood to do this sort of thing. Some encouragement for artists who get intimidated to paint. We are currently in the awkward stage. This is the stage where it is not as fun, maybe discouraging, you don't know where you wanna go. And I love the awkward stage. There is so much freedom here and there's so much potential, so much opportunity to learn. So if that's of any encouragement to you folks, mm. There you go. While we are painting this, I want to talk about something really cool. So this video is a collaboration with a friend of mine, Katie Jobling. And for years, I have looked up to her as a painter. She makes beautiful artwork, beautiful florals, beautiful seascapes. And her style and her personality both really speak to me. She reached out to me wanting to collaborate, a collaboration slash maybe sponsorship. I don't really know how to word that when I'm promoting something that a friend launched. She released this course, it's called Learn How to Paint with Confidence and it's for beginner artists where you can learn to find your own unique style, create your own unique artwork, but do it with confidence. This is really cool because it is broken into six different modules. The first module goes over overcoming your big challenges. You know, why am I not motivated to create? Let's dive into that. Second module is finding your creative freedom. So what drives you as an artist? What are your goals and your dreams as an artist? And how can you be challenged to pursue those? The third module talks about the fastest ways that you can improve your artwork. The fourth module teaches you how to take and use reference photos. The fifth module works with you on discovering your own unique painting style and who you are as an artist, which I think is really cool because so many of you folks comment about painting styles and art styles on my channel. So this is really applicable to you folks. And the final module talks about seven strategies to help you paint anything. I think this is a really wonderful painting course. It is very unique too many that I have seen before. And my friend Katie worked really hard on this. She poured her heart into it. And I can tell just by talking to her and just by looking at this. So I'm really excited to share it with you folks. She actually has a free painting tutorial that she wants to give you folks as well. So I will link that down below. 
But if you are interested in taking this painting course, you can get 35% off with the code 35MIRA. So definitely take advantage of that. Once again, the code is 35MIRA. I do earn a small commission from this. I just wanna be upfront, but we are collaborating and working together. I love helping other artists succeed and because she created this class, I can help her succeed by promoting it to you, but I can also help you folks succeed by telling you about it. And you know, painting is a very intimidating thing. And I try to give you folks different sketchbook ideas and painting ideas and stuff. But I wanna share something with you that's more in depth than just these videos here in my channel. So definitely check out Katie's painting course, Learn to Paint with Confidence. I think it will be very beneficial for you folks. And yeah, again, the link is in the description. Let's continue with our painting. All right, these bottom wings are like massive. We're gonna roll with it. This is what makes these moths so beautiful, so unique. Look at that bottom wing. Whew, I literally just winged it. It's a little tacky, but so are my jokes. Okay, I need to decide on this background. Do I want bright orange to complement this greenish color? Or do I wanna do like pink? I don't know. I'm just gonna paint this all in one color for now. How about that? Whoa. My old crusty spray bottle has been going for four or five years now, this nasty thing. Hold on. Bro, it's squirting like seven feet across this room. I don't know if I should be using this one. I might need to get a new one. This is just an old Mario Badescu. Is that who say it? Spray bottle from Rosewater. Try my best here. Oh my goodness. Totally using this paintbrush from the Artistic Bear Co. My girl, Chloe Rose, shout out to you. It matches this moth, so obviously we have to use it. Drying again. Okay, I feel like I really need to decide on this background because once I add details to this moth, I'm indecisive today. <laughs> what do I wanna do? What do I wanna do, folks? These are my current choices. I just feel like orange is too clashy with this. I know I really like the complimentary color idea, but I'm not feeling it with this Luna moth. Like, no. I feel like this, in theory, it would be so cool. I'm not feeling it. Hmm, I don't know. I would probably go with the warmer pink because I always go toward the warmer colors, but I think pale pink complements this a little better. We're doing it. We're gonna be brave. It's funny, I led this whole thing with an orange background and now we're changing it. That's all right. I did not rinse this brush enough. Look at that. <laughs> All right, we have our colors blocked in. Let's do the details. Hopefully this is dry now. Ooh, it is. Let's use this teeny, teeny brush. Okay, let's work on the wings. So we're gonna approach this with like a folk art style. You can probably already tell, but I think it would make this moth look really cool and it would fit in with my other moths that I've done in the past. Try to do this like gold color. There we go. To do white. And then brown for the center again. Mm -hmm. 
For a while, it felt like this was not going anywhere, but we're making progress. Okay, I'm gonna do like the little veiny looking things in the wings. Okay, let's add a splash of like lime green ish mint up here. Oh my goodness, this color. Beautiful. Okay, there's this little like line on the wings. This, hmm, maybe it needs to be a little more green. Ooh, I'm really liking this, guys. Okay, the moth is done, so let's focify. Focify. We're gonna make that a word. Focify the background. Let's do like a pinkish red. Okay, these are little funky, fun, flowery tulip things. I'm trying to come up with a bunch of like different things to do in this background. I want the vibe for this one to feel kind of bold and happy. I feel like these colors are a lot more bold than I usually do too. But sometimes as artists, we just have to be brave, you know? Tackle what you want to tackle. Don't let fear hold you back. Okay, so now I think I wanna do like leaves and stuff kind of collaged within the center. So I'm gonna start color borrowing and you're gonna see colors within the moth that are gonna be repeated in the background. Doing some funky flowers here. This gives me a lot of like fall vibes and I am here for it. Okay, so this part, hey, what to do? We're taking away the symmetry for this stuff now. I think it'll be more fun. Gotta do the berries. They're in every moth piece that I've done on my channel anyway. I think, <laughs> I could be wrong. My memory isn't the best sometimes. I think I'll do some like full teardrop looking leaves too without the little veiny things. Right now I'm just doing these little blobby things. I kind of want to do that as well. Whew, my hand is cramping from all those details. Oh, I just saw something I need to fix. I'm either going to do the edges like bright red or gold. I'm gonna let this sit for a little bit so I can think about it. Let's move on to painting number two. Uh, got our canvas. I want to make the most of all this paint here on this beautiful palette. I also wanna be better at like cleaning my palettes off because in the last couple videos, I have made a lot of comments about my crusty palette and my crusty brushes. Maybe we should do a crusty palette club and a crusty brushes club. Okay, I'm just gonna mix up some stuff for the background here and I'm just gonna use up all this paint on this side of my palette so we don't waste things. I'm gonna coat this wood, woohoo. Now this painting, I think is gonna be really fun attempting with gouache because Usually when I do this type of painting, it's with oil or acrylic. This one is also inspired by Katie Jobling. And since I mentioned her course earlier, I just thought it would be fitting to do something florally in honor of her. I did not mix up enough of this color. Don't you love when you do that? Guess we'll try to achieve it again. Ooh, pretty much spot on. Remember this lovely purple color from earlier? I can't get it off my mind. I wanna use it. Let's make the most of it. Oh, I will squeeze it in here, right there. Okay, I'm gonna tone it down ever so slightly with some orange. And I'm gonna just start doing some stuff here. It might look weird at first, but bear with me. Water break. 
Okay, I'm gonna just make it a little more purpley now and do some purpley splotches. So this is gonna be like super impressionistic. I have been into painting like wildflower fields for probably two years now. And I think the reason why I like it is because it is so forgiving. I love it so much. That's the wildflowers so far. Now it's time to do like the greenery and the sky. Now in one of my recent videos, I talked about sky colors and how you can have unique sky colors and it actually is really cool. So I'm gonna do like a creamy yellow sky again. All right, creamy yellow. Do some little clouds. Now it's time for the fun part, all the greenery. So I did this brown underpainting because some of it is gonna show through at the end, but we're gonna cover most of it with green. So all these little brush strokes are gonna add up into a big picture. Look how gross this paint water is getting. Am I doing anything about it? No. Lazy artist problems, right? This is a good brush for leaves. Let's try it. We need some contrast up in here. This is too, yeah. Okay, we finished the paintings and I just remembered to paint the edges. So here's the final reveal. This was the first painting with the Luna Moth and I did red edges. I'm super, super happy with the color selection because I think it just makes everything else pop. Anyway, this was fun for some folk art. I enjoyed doing this one. It's been a while since I've painted a moth and it actually felt like it was about time. You know, it's fall. I feel like every fall we paint a moth on my channel. It was only fitting, right? <laughs> now this one here was more comfort zone-y. I did purple edges. I'm really happy with this one too. So that is it. I hope you had fun painting on wood with me. If you are somebody who wants to get into painting, maybe you're a beginner painter or somebody who is just looking to gain some skills, you know, look for your art style, that sort of thing, I highly recommend Katie Jobling's course. So once again, it is linked down below and you can get 35% off with the code 35Mira. Thank you so much for watching and just for hanging out with me. See you next week. Bye.